Welcome everyone to the Virtual Excel Academy. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you are. We're with you. We're excited to be with you today. My name is Cheryl Kamei Hannon. I am one of your hostesses, but joining me is Leanne. From Hello, APA. everyone. Glad to see you. Charlotte from Paths to Literacy, Texas, and Perkins School for the Blind. Hi, everyone. Welcome. And today we have a returning guest speaker, Robin Keating Clark. We're so excited to have you. She will be joining us for a lesson on community connections. So we will be talking about food. How many of you like to eat? If you like to eat, let's say woohoo to food. <laughs> Let me know if you are like me and you like to eat. Tell me who you are, where you're from, and what is your favorite food? Welcome, Shannon. Welcome, Nathan. Woohoo! I'm glad to see lots of people like to eat. Hello, Sanaya. Lisa likes nachos. Autumn, hello. Hannah, welcome from Utah. She likes pancakes. Born in Mississippi. Somebody from Puerto Rico, welcome. And chicken parmesan, yum. What is that? Gisley's or just Gis Giselle's? Giselle's is, oh, Giselle's is from Puerto Rico. I thought that was a kind of food. I was wondering, what is that? Tacos from Shannon. You know what's happening? It's populating so quickly. I can barely keep up and I'm reading so fast. I'm sorry, I misread your name. Well, welcome everyone. We're so glad you're here. Robin, please tell us about Community Connections. All right. Hello, everybody. I am excited to be back. I want to remind everyone that we will be using the chat window. So make sure that your window is open and then we'll have some volunteers who will also will call on you. I'm so excited to be back and to see everybody. Some names that I remember, names that now join me in my short term class. So hello, everybody. And let me tell you what we're going to do this week on session one. We are going to learn all about restaurants and talk about food and menu. And then on Thursday, we are going to talk about skills for using the restaurant. So they go together. So let me first get started by showing you and telling you where our lesson comes from today. I did not purchase this one from Teachers Pay Teachers, but as always, I am forever using the Independent Living Skills Assessment. I-L-S-A, I'm holding it up for the camera so that you can see it. And this is one of our expanded core curriculum checklists. Every lesson that I do always starts with a reference to our assessments so that I know what skills, what strategies, and what progression our students need to learn. So that of course is my say to all of my teachers that if you're not using the ILSA, and I will of course type that in on the chat, ILSA, it is part of the evals kit. Make sure you are always using it. So welcome to all of my friends. Right now I see Grand Prairie, I see North Carolina, Colorado. Um, Giselis, I just entered that into the chat. So you'll see it right there and we can always email you that link as well. Um, we are so excited to get started. Now, today we're gonna learn a lot about different places. So this is going to be an easy question. Who likes to go to restaurants? Tell me, who likes to go to restaurants? If you do, you can tell me, and I do, in the chat, you can give me a thumbs up. So Grace, Angel, Rochelle, Cynthia, Shannon, look at all of these great places. Hello, Mary Noel, good to see you. I follow her on Pinterest. Um, Sharon Reese, this is one of my students. Hello, Reese. Uh, good to see that a lot of people like going to restaurants. I'm looking at Laura's comment who says, I miss going to restaurants. I miss going to restaurants too. But thankfully, every one of my favorite restaurants has converted to to go and I have been ordering from a lot of places. Great, I love seeing everybody coming in and talking about liking to go to restaurants. Now, let me ask you a question. What makes it kind of difficult or tricky, maybe even confusing 
about going to a restaurant by yourself, not so much with your parents, but what things make going to restaurants tricky, frustrating, confusing? What are some of those things? Grace M says, because I can't read everything. I agree. Hannah chimes in that says, not seeing the menu. What, thing, what are things that make it frustrating? Is it viewing the menu? So near, I hope I said your name right. You said that too. Ryan's already saying when the waiter gets your order wrong, preach. I know what you're saying there. But what other kinds of things makes it frustrating or maybe even discouraging? Is there anybody who's even scared to go to a restaurant by yourself or nervous? I see a lot of people talking about that menu, a braille menu, the menu being too small. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever noticed this, but a lot of places have braille menus, but they're way out of date. Um, oh, Hannah says when you're starving and there is a long line, I totally agree. All right, I like to hear all of this great discussion. You can keep putting stuff in the chat window. And if you're watching me and my eyes are going off to the side, that's what I'm doing is I'm reading it. Josephina, poor lighting while reading the menu. Yes, Shannon says finding the bathrooms. Does any of my low vision students struggle with all the dim lighting? Like it was super lit when you came in and then it got super dark or it's shadowy, those are some really hard ones. Not well laid out, says Justin, or it's just hard to see where things go. Uneven flooring, says Mary. Yeah, that low lighting, I totally agree. And I've seen a lot of my students, old and young, uh, really struggle with that. Um, Sanaya's already saying when they mess up your order, I should put her on so everybody can hear her say that. I bet she would like roll her eyes so well when she says that. Um, so now we're going to get into just learning about these types of restaurants, because when I say restaurant, that means so much more than just one thing. So what I want to know from everybody is what places do you like to eat? Can you tell me your name? Uh, tell me the name of the restaurants. Grace, I see your question. If you go somewhere and you cannot read, how, how do you do that? We're going to cover that question, Grace, so put a pin in that. Ryan says Red Lobster. Cyan says Eddie Rockets. Sarah is naming Red Lobster and Olive Garden. Paige is saying Cracker Braille. Ooh, I love Cracker Braille. Cracker Braille. Um, Hannah, Cafe Rio. All right, I love it. Tell me the names of places you like to eat. Nadia, McDonald's. Oh, I don't know, Nadia. Reese Branch. This is my girl right there. She says Texas Roadhouse. My favorite, Reese. But you probably knew that. Uh, Chick-fil-A. Um, Eddie Rockets. Man, I got to go check this place out, Cyan. Carrie, Jersey Mike's, In-N-Out Burger. Has anybody noticed that the line at In-N-Out Burger is ridiculous right now? I've tried to go three times. I haven't been able to get in. Popeyes, they have delicious French fries there. All right, I love to see everybody's answers. Oh, Ico, Panera. Can I just tell you, Panera Bread is one of my favorite restaurants, but there is no Panera in Utah. And so every year I have a family member that buys me gift cards to Panera, but I can't ever use it because there are no Paneras in Utah. So I have to wait until I leave the States. Becky Runza, that is a Nebraska thing. I know that because when I went to the Nebraska school, that's where I went. It was for a Runza. All right. I love hearing everybody's answers. It sounds like your brains are open and ready to talk restaurants. Before we just talk about what to do at a restaurant, I want us to spend a lot of time today talking about the different types of restaurants that we have, different types of restaurants. So now I want you to be thinking about some of these places that you've talked about, Texas Roadhouse, Chick-fil-A, Popeyes. What types of restaurants are they? Are they fast food? Are they family style, casual dining? 
So now I want you to say the name of your restaurant in the chat window and then tell me next to it, what type of restaurant do you think it is? So if somebody has picked, let's see, the last ones I'm looking at right now are Popeye's, Runza. Um, go through and tell me what kind of restaurant it is. Um, Hannah, Cafe Rio, a buffet, mm, kinda. What a burger, a family restaurant, Chick-fil-A, fast food, Chili's, family restaurant. Hello, Lori Cornelius. Uh, Mary Noel, Olive Garden. She says it's a dine-in. All right, this is what I want everybody to be thinking about. The type of restaurant and the type of restaurant it is. This is gonna be really important as we build our toolbox for being successful with eating at restaurants. Oh, Josefina says sitar, an Indian restaurant, sit down, dine in. I like the language that everybody is using. They're using language like dine in, fast food. I haven't seen anybody name an upscale restaurant, fine dining. Can anybody name me a fine dining or upscale type of restaurant? Let's see, Paige is talking about Red Lobster. That's a popular one. Family style, casual dining, yes. Can anybody give me an upscale? Ooh, Leanne, that's a good one. Melting Pot, fine dining, yes. Has anybody ever heard of Ruth Chris Steakhouse? Fine dining. Um, Outback, mm, I don't know if that's super fine dining. I would definitely say that's more casual. Um, Cian, well, I hope I said your name right, Melting Pot. You want to know what that is? Save that and let's do a Google on that one later. I like how everybody's kind of wondering what this is. This is really good discussion. Kim is wondering if maybe P.F. Chang's. I don't know if I would put P.F. Chang's in our um, upscale. Mary Noel says, never go to fine dining, too expensive. That might be one of the reasons why a lot of us, especially teachers, might not be joining a fine dining place. Um, I love all of the examples that everybody is offering. Keep going with the name of the restaurant and the type. So I see another one for Outback, Dine In, Olive Garden. Ooh, somebody tell me, what kind is Olive Garden? Is that fast food? What does everybody know about that one? If somebody can tell me what Olive Garden is. Ooh, Megan said Moe's is fast casual. I like that. We're gonna go back to fast casual. Um, okay, so everybody told me that Olive Garden is Italian. Thank you. And now I see some people like Ricky Lynn telling me that it is family dining. Okay, excellent. Everybody's got a good feel for these things. Okay, here's what we're going to do now. We're gonna go through the different types of restaurants and we're gonna talk about what they are. Before we get to that one point real quick, has anybody ever been to a fast food restaurant? If you've been to a fast food restaurant like McDonald's, blow up my chat window and tell me yes, because I'm sure my whole window is gonna go with all of the yeses. <laughs> okay, good. Now, who's ever been to a family dining or casual dining? Casual dining or family dining? Oh, here comes my yeses. All right. We're going to start first with casual dining or family dining because sometimes they're mentioned on the same one. Casual dining or family dining. And that doesn't mean you have to go with your family for family dining. Listen to this definition. Casual dining restaurants have a relaxed, casual ambiance with a lot of seating. Can anybody tell me in the chat window, what does ambiance mean? If I said that casual dining has a relaxed, casual ambiance, what is the ambiance? Did I stump a few people? I think I stumped Sian. All right, I think I saw that Justin, yes, atmosphere. Lori coming in, yeah, the environment, perfect. So casual dining restaurants have a relaxed, casual ambiance or the environment with a lot of seating. 
The menus offer several options. Meals are prepared using better quality ingredients compared to that of fast food. Many of the menu options are like many things that you can get like appetizers. So let's talk about Olive Garden because Olive Garden has been a very popular choice. So the menu at Olive Garden, they give you many choices, soups, salads, appetizers, pastas, grilled meats, and desserts. Sarah, I know, I agree. Sarah says it's making me hungry. Girl, it is noon in Utah, and I'm feeling the lunch bug right now. So let's go back and talk about that casual dining or family dining type of restaurant. Casual dining restaurants have a relaxed, casual ambiance with a lot of seating. So if you've ever been to an Olive Garden, a Texas Roadhouse, an Applebee's, a TJI Fridays, they have a ton of different places to sit. Now, when you go there, you're probably going to get fresh vegetables. You can get steamed vegetables. Some places will even offer farm to table, meaning that they just got it right from the farm. They didn't buy in their produce from another place. And that they have a lot of different parts on the menu. So again, appetizers, salads, desserts, drinks. All right. Casual dining can be a chain restaurant or a local favorite chain restaurant. Does that mean that this restaurant has chains around it? That can't be right. Who can tell me what a chain restaurant is? Ronnie, I just saw your message. I agree. Those endless breadsticks are fabulous. Um, who can tell me what a chain restaurant, when you hear those words? Ooh, Natasha, it's in, it's in more than one location. Yes. Who else can give me some examples or a definition of what a chain restaurant is? A chain restaurant. Everybody's giving me examples of them, but can you define it? Give me the definition. Nadia, yeah, a restaurant that you would see everywhere. Yes. A chain, now I want everybody to think of a real physical chain, is linked together so that there's lots of them. And that's what a chain restaurant is. There's lots of them, the same menu. It's usually in more than one part of a city or a state. There are some type of chain restaurants that are nationwide. And who can tell me what nationwide means in the chat? Who can tell me what nationwide is? All right, so let me see. I want someone to tell me what nationwide is. Okay. Um, I see a lot of people saying like around the world, around the country. Yes, yeah, several states. Very good. So I could go to an Olive Garden back home in Connecticut. I could go to an Olive Garden in Illinois. I could go to an Olive Garden in Utah. It is a nationwide chain restaurant. Okay. Now, chain restaurants don't have to just be nationwide. They can also be regional. So what does regional mean? What does regional mean? If it's a regional chain restaurant, I'll wait for you to tell me your answers in the chat window. A regional chain restaurant. Nope, Hannah went for across countries. Nope, Nur is saying from region to region. Um, Jen W, I like what you said, a few places close together. Um, oh, I saw Mary, Mary Noel talking about Runza. It's regional. It's only in particular areas. Yeah, Nadia saying some spots. Um, I like what Lisa says, in one area of the country, like Mid-Atlantic or Southwest. Yes, a regional, like it could be New England. It could just be a restaurant in those five states. So some restaurants are, are a regional one. Patty Faley, of course, I refer to Connecticut as my home. You guys are my home at Besby. Um, now think about it. I like to think of Whataburger. Has anybody, oh, Josephina said Bojangles. Okay, perfect. The South has a lot of regional restaurants. So Bojangles is one. Um, Whataburger is another one. Um, Chick-fil-A used to be a regional restaurant. You could only get it in a few places. Hannah Hart, Cafe Rio, only in the West. Waffle House, yes. 
in and out Burger. in and out Burger, you see, I think is still just in a regional area, but it's only found in those few areas. Okay, perfect. So now when we talk about casual dining or family dining, let's do a little recap of what we've learned. Carrie, you're missing out on some good places. We'll have to find some good places for you. She says none of these places are available in Iowa. Let's go do our recap. Casual dining or fine dining can be nationwide or regional. They have that relaxed, casual environment with a lot of seating. Now, when I say a lot of seating, I mean more than 50 tables, okay? So a good sized Texas roadhouse probably has close to 75 areas. You might be able to sit at the bar. It's a ton of places. Now, the next thing I want you to think about is the way that the meals are prepared. Let me ask you a yes or no question. If I wanna order at Olive Garden or Texas Roadhouse, which are casual dining restaurants, would I get my food given to me in a wrapper and a bag? Would it all come wrapped up or would I get it served on a plate? So you can just tell me in the chat window, plate or wrapped? All right, Sophia, Justin, yes, everybody's getting it. So at casual dining, I'm gonna get my food given to me on a plate. Of course, in this day and age, if I'm ordering from Texas Roadhouse, I'm doing it to go. And so they're probably gonna make it fancy and give me packaging. But we're gonna pretend for the next 40 minutes, we're not in a pandemic and we can enjoy Texas Roadhouse the way it was meant to be. Yes, I see everybody coming through, you know it. Your food comes to you on a plate. Tell me now about the portion size. Portion size, ooh. In fact, before we even talk about what it is, can anybody tell me what portion size means? What does it mean when I say the portion size is? What does portion size mean? Oh, I saw that perfect, Sophia. It's the amount of food you get. Oh, and everybody said that, excellent. So portion size is the amount of food that you get. Now at a place like Texas Roadhouse, Applebee's, Olive Garden, Red Lobster, since that's a big popular one, you're probably going to get a large portion size. You're gonna get a lot of food, which means you can usually cut it in half and eat some at dinner and then save it for later. That's what I do. Um, so it's a big portion. Now, here's your next quiz about casual dining restaurants. Do you get plastic silverware? or do you get real silverware or cutlery? Do you get real or plastic at a place like Olive Garden? Oh, here comes my chat window. That's my sound of how fast I see them coming in. Everybody's agreeing that you're gonna get real silverware. That's right. And how does the silverware normally come at a place like Olive Garden, Red Lobster, or Texas Roadhouse? Oh, I saw it already, Cyan, you're quick on it. Yes, Sophia, wrapped in a napkin. Good to know. Now, if you're at a place like Texas Roadhouse, they're gonna give you a special steak knife, but everybody's got it. At a casual or family dining restaurant, you're gonna get that food or your utensils all wrapped up. And if anybody here ever used to be a server, it's like the death of you because you wrap hundreds of them every week. Okay. So let's do our quick review about what we've learned about casual dining or family style restaurants. That big relaxed atmosphere, lots of tables. Ooh, do you think that a place like Olive Garden is going to be loud, noisy, or in between? What do you guys think the noise level of a restaurant like this is? Oh, I see a lot of people saying noisy. I see a lot of people saying in between. Yeah, I agree with you. A restaurant like Olive Garden or Texas Roadhouse might be in between. Let's talk about what makes it loud. Um, it's not always the customers. If you've ever been at a place like Texas Roadhouse, can you tell I go there a lot? What also makes it loud is the music that they play in the background. So there's the music, 
There's going to be people talking, plates clattering. Yes, exactly. Um, so a casual dining restaurant is probably not going to be super quiet. It's going to be kind of loud. They have lots and lots of tables. Thank you, Lori. Um, a place like Texas Roadhouse might be broadcasting TV sets. Um, TGI Fridays does, Applebee's, they'll have TV sets in the background. Their menu has lots of options. Remember, when you go to an Olive Garden, they're gonna have a full menu full of choices. Salads, appetizers, main course, chicken dishes, pasta, 700 different ways. So many different types of things. Hannah chimed in that another thing about these restaurants is you have to have a reservation. Hmm, it's a good point, Hannah, but is it always a reservation or is it something called call ahead seating? And I can tell you this from experience because at Texas Roadhouse, I do call ahead seating a lot, which means I can call ahead to try to minimize my wait time for getting into it. So thank you for sharing that. So the portion sizes are usually big. Uh, unlike fast food, they get real silverware, napkins. Um, casual dining can be the chain. It could be national or regional. Everybody can name me lots of them. But now there's one more thing I wanted to discuss that is close, closer to our neck of the woods, and that's the lighting. Does anybody know what the lighting is in, in a casual dining restaurant? Thank you, Skaya. It's good to know that Macaroni Grill has call ahead seating. But now let's talk about lighting at these types of establishments because that matters to, to a lot of people, especially if you have low vision. And especially if you have the type of low vision where when it gets dark, you lose a lot of your vision. Yeah, a lot of people are telling me that it's dimly lit or it has shadows. Would anybody agree that it's shadowy when you're there? And these are things to think about, especially when we want to flex our O&M skills, because when you walk into an Olive Garden or an Applebee's for dinner, you're definitely going to see that it's shadowy. And when I say shadowy, does everybody understand when I say that? The lights are in different places and it creates lots of shadows. In fact, where are the lights normally in, in a casual dining restaurant? Does anybody know where the lights are? Is it big track lighting like they have in high schools? I see a lot of people telling me that it's on the ceiling. Lily, yes, over the tables. Usually the lighting is directly over the table. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you might have lighting immediately at your table, but then it's shadowy or dim all around you. Yes, I definitely agree. And that creates a potential challenge. Has anybody found it to be difficult to find your table in one of these types of restaurants? Has anybody found it difficult? Yeah, it, it can be hard for sure, especially when the hostess just says, okay, follow me. And then she takes off really fast. And now you're trying to follow a line of people through all of these tables. That's what makes it kind of challenging about these restaurants. So next session, we're gonna really get into tips and tricks about eating at these types of restaurants. If we do it now, I might not get through all the types of restaurants. Don't worry, we're gonna go back and answer a lot of those ones. Okay, so everybody understands casual dining and fast food. If you have a question about casual dining restaurants or fast food, go ahead and throw that in the chat window and I can answer that. I'll give a second for that delay. If I don't see any questions, we're gonna move on to our next type of restaurant, which I think you guys are gonna do well. Okay, my five seconds, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, I don't see any questions. That's not a bad thing. It means we covered it really good. All right, now we're gonna move on to fast food, and I wanna see my chat window go brrr. How many people have ever been to a fast food restaurant before? Maybe I should say who's been to a fast food restaurant this week. <laughs> All right, I see lots of people telling me that you have been to one. Autumn for sure has been to a fast food restaurant. I love it. Okay, everybody, tell me 
what types of fast food restaurants are there? Give me some names of some fast food restaurants that's not McDonald's. Give me something else. Justin says he tries to avoid them. I would like to say in real life, so do I, but I end up showing up every once in a while. KFC, Burger King, Chick-fil-A, Taco Bell, it's Taco Tuesday. Everybody go to Taco Bell today and get a free Doritos Locos Taco. It's delicious. Subway, Wendy's. It's true. It's true. Today is Taco Tuesday. Um, Popeye's, Royal Farms. I've never heard of Royal Farms. That must be a regional one. Becky gives me Jimmy John's. That was the fast food choice of my college years. All right. KFC. I ate popcorn chicken there just the other day. I don't want you guys to think I eat at fast food all the time. <laughs> I think that's what it's sounding like. Five guys. That's another good one. All right. So everybody seems to be telling me that you get it. in and out Sonic. Ooh, has anybody eaten at a Sonic before? That's one we haven't mentioned a lot. Sonic is different from a lot of other ones because you just drive up to a Sonic and they wear roller skates. It's kind of fun. Okay, so it looks like everybody definitely understands uh, what a fast food restaurant is. So listen up, everybody. Fast food restaurants, as the name suggests, specializes in serving food they can prepare and serve quickly. Okay, remember that. Fast food is all about being able to prepare food and serve it very quickly. So I'm gonna say that a restaurant like Chick-fil-A is in a special category, and we'll talk about that later. Fast food restaurants have no table service. Ooh, no table service? What does that mean? Who can tell me what table service means? Table service. Now remember, this is not pandemic thinking. Let's pretend we can still go into restaurants. All right, Trina got it right away, being waited on. Yeah, they come to the table. Exactly, they bring your food to you. Now, that's why Chick-fil-A is in a different category than most typical fast food restaurants because table service is when they bring your food to you, they help you out with it, but a place like Burger King Wendy's, McDonald's, Taco Bell, they don't have table service, okay? You order your food at the counter and you get it at the counter. The only time you have to wait is if you're in the drive-through and they haven't finished making your popcorn chicken, which is what happened to me at KFC the other day. I swear, I eat good food. I don't always eat at fast food restaurants, but I was desperate. So table service, Chick-fil-A is different because they actually do offer table service. All right, now let's talk about the menu. Is the menu big with lots of options, like for casual dining? Are there a lot of things on the menu? Tell me what you think. All right, oh, Cyan, everyone, I just want you guys to know, Eddie Rockets does have table service. Yeah, I like it, everyone's coming through. I like how Josephina said it. She said limited menu. So at a fast food restaurant, they have a limited menu. They're not going to have a ton of different places. They're just really going to have a, a staple of things. In fact, if you've ever eaten at an In-N-Out burger, that's probably the most limited menu I've ever seen. Perfect. Now, the price point. Ooh, price point. Can anybody tell me what price point means? What does the word price point mean, or that phrase? Price point. Lori Cornelius, you get your my gold star, you answered first. How much the meal will cost? Yes. So at a casual dining restaurant, the price point is about 15 to $20 per meal, okay? But now at a fast food restaurant, can anybody tell me the price point? at a fast food restaurant? Who can tell me a fast food restaurant price point? Let's just say McDonald's. How much do you think something costs? Sarah says $10 per meal. Ooh, I don't know. I think that's a little high. Gisela, $7.99? I'm ordering off that Dalla Hala meal, so I'm only eating like for a buck, 25. 
In fact, can I sound old for a second and say, in my day, as I pretend to stroke a beard that I don't have, it used to just be the dollar menu, but now it's a dollar fifty. Or Hannah, four for four at Wendy's. Yep, Nur, you're right, three dollars. Yeah. You must not be too hungry if you eat for a dollar fifty. It's true though, Josephina. You can get nuggets for a dollar. It's totally true. Okay, so the price point at a McDonald's is definitely going to be cheaper. Tell me about the seating options. Now we talked about at casual dining, the seating, there was lots of seating. Tell me about, is there a ton of seating at a fast food restaurant? What do you guys think? Um, Auto, Autumn is already telling me no. Yeah, it doesn't really have a lot of seating. It's just basic. Now a lot of restaurants are getting a makeover where they've got this fancy bar that you can sit at. Um, but usually, yeah, there's some benches, a few tables, some posh McDonald's are even now giving some big chairs that you can sit in. I saw a Wendy's the other day that had a big screen TV set in it where you could watch something. But overall, it's gonna have limited seating. Okay, now who can tell me about the lighting? What's the lighting like in a fast food restaurant? Do you think it's bright lights? Is it gonna be dim and shadowy? Shannon is already saying bright. A trainer is in right, saying brighter. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be bright. To be honest, fast food restaurants are probably the easiest for everybody to see. Now there might be a few of you who are thinking too bright, um, but it definitely has a ton of light for you to see, which does make it easy. Now, unlike Olive Garden or Taco Bell, or not Taco Bell, Texas Roadhouse, when you are given the menu, where do you access the menu at a fast food restaurant? There's gonna be two places inside the restaurant now that you can access the menu. Who can tell me? Oh, Hannah, I already see it, touch screens? Yep, Sanaya, there are no waiters at McDonald's, trust me. Mm -mm. Shannon, hi on the wall, yep. So that menu is gonna be posted or it's going to just be a touch screen. And I will tell you that neither are really accessible to somebody with a vision impairment. The touch screen can be very difficult to see and to use. There's really not a lot of accessibility there. But we will change that by reminding everybody that accessibility matters. All right, so the menu is far away. You can't really see it. Um, but there will be some tips and tricks that you can use for that. But we'll talk about that next time. Okay, now one other thing about um, fast food restaurants, tell me about the portion size. What's the portion size? Yes, Laura, you could pull it up on your phone. That's one of the tips we'll talk about next time. Tell me about the portion size. Some people say good, some people say small. Yeah. Now one good fact about fast food versus casual dining is they don't want you to be super comfortable in a fast food restaurant. That's why they don't have nice tables and real cutlery. They wanna do a quick turnaround. Whereas casual dining, you can sit, eat a big old plate of food, talk about life. Everybody's giving you the right size. So Nadia says it's the size that you're supposed to eat. Depends on what you want. Usually, Fast food has maybe a smaller one, but they have tons of calories. They're not always the, the best. And I think everybody knows what's on a menu at a fast food place. On a menu, cheeseburgers, chicken fingers, french fries, nuggets, that's what's usually on the menu. Okay, any questions about fast food restaurants? What it is, what do they have? I'll let you ask me in the chat window. We'll do a quick recap. Fast food, good lighting. You order at the counter. Limited seating. They have easier priced menus. Okay, uh, so those are some things that we've learned about fast food. We're not gonna spend a ton of time on it because I find that most people usually know what fast food is. There's one other thing that a fast food restaurant almost always has that other restaurants don't have. Nope, I'm reading Autumn's comment. She's hungry, she wants to eat. 
I say, grab a snack, Autumn. Just keep listening and eat some food. It's all good with me. All right, so a fast food restaurant is really the only type of restaurant that has a drive-through, a drive-through. Now for casual dining restaurants, you will likely see to-go orders, to-go or carry out, which I think in this day and age, everybody knows what to-go and carry out means because that's what we're all doing with these restaurants. But fast food restaurants have that drive-through. Again, the purpose of fast food is to get in and get out as fast as you can. However, if you are eating at a fast food and you go to in and out these days, you're definitely not in and out quickly. It's a long line. The other day I tried to go there. Again, I don't eat a lot of fast food, but that makes me sound like it again. Um, the line was all the way around for a burger. I said, forget it. All right, Lori's asking me a question. What would Panera be? Don't worry, we're gonna get to what Panera and let's see, maybe a Chipotle. We're gonna talk about what those restaurants are soon. In fact, that leads us to our very next category, which is casual upscale or casual fast food. All right, what do you think is casual fast food or casual upscale? I'll give you a hint. Lori just asked what Panera would be. <laughs> but what do you think casual upscale or casual fast food is? Any ideas? You can give me the name of a restaurant if you'd like as an idea. Okay, Autumn's gonna go get a snack right now. We'll see you in a second, boo. Okay, Hannah, steak and shake, all right. Um, Lori says a nicer place. They still might have a drive through but better food. Um, Shannon says Outback. Outback is not going to be casual fast food. Outback is definitely family dining or casual, casual um, where you sit and eat like a Texas roadhouse. Okay, any other ideas of what casual fast food is? Um, Marianne, Jason's Deli. Yeah, that's another example of one. Perfect. Cafe Rio. Yes, that's a good one. Another one, Darren, Jason's Deli. Yes. Those are all types of casual fast food. Cyan, you said Burger King. No bueno. Mm -mm. Burger King and Lily Arby's, those are fast food. And I'll tell you why. Because those are the in and out type of place. A casual fast food. Let me walk you through what this one is. Fast casual or casual fast food or casual upscale. Okay, but for our terms right now, I'm just going to say fast casual. Fast casual restaurants are a hybrid of fast food and casual dining. Hybrid. Somebody tell me what the word hybrid means. Hybrid. Can anybody tell me what hybrid means? All right. Um, a cafeteria style like Luby's. We'll talk about that one in a second, Justin. Okay, hybrid. Everybody's giving me a great definition. They're saying a mix. Yes, a hybrid is a mix. I like to use the word mashup because I think it's fun. Um, so fast casual restaurants are a hybrid of fast food and casual dining. They come together. They offer minimal table services. Yes, so Hannah, a Cafe Zupas, uh, a Chick-fil-A, a Panera. They have limited or minimal table service, all right? The other features of fast casual is that the menu is limited, okay? So if I go to a Chipotle, I still only am going to get a variation of a certain amount of topics, but they have better food and it's moderately priced. So for fast casual, you're going to find that the menu is more expensive than Taco Bell, or, but, le but less expensive than Olive Garden. Fast casual is right in the middle of fast food and casual dining. All right, I've seen some great examples of fast casual. Again, examples are Chipotle, Panera, Chick-fil-A. Are there any other examples that anybody wants to give me of fast casual? So um, I think that was Justin who talked about Luby's. 
I've never been there, but when you say it's a cafeteria style, I would say that that might be in that middle because they're not going to be family. It's not fast food. All right. Any other ideas of fast casual? Okay. Now, where do you order in a fast casual restaurant? Now, in a family dining, we can sit and wait for the server. Um, we order at a counter at fast food. Where do you order at fast casual? Oh, I see all the answers coming in spot on. At fast casual, you're still going to order at the counter, but then you can go and sit and wait, go to your table, and they'll bring your food to you. But how does the server or the staff know? Who gets what order? So if I'm going to order a chicken bowl at Chipotle, I've paid for it, I've ordered it, do I just sit there and hope that they're going to know it's mine? How do they know? Oh, perfect. Hannah, Nira, you guys are all coming in. They give you a number card. They might ask my name so that they can come around and say order for Robin. Yeah, everybody knows that you might give a name and they're going to give you either a buzzer or like a standard that has a number on it so that when the server sees your food finished, they're gonna see order number 35 and then they're gonna look for the person who has 35. Perfect. Okay, so everybody gets how the food comes to you. Now you have to wait in the line, uh, but talk about when you see the menu, like a Cafe Zupa's or a Chipotle, the menu is somewhat posted but how do you order? And this is like a Cafe Rio, a pan, um, not so much a Panera, um, but at a restaurant like that, like a Chipotle, which I'm gonna say because it's a national chain restaurant, the menu is posted, but what are you looking at when you come up to order? Does anybody know? Anybody been to a Chipotle that can talk about what the ordering process is like? Skaya, thank you. She says, you. Move down the counter and tell them what you want as you go. Yeah, you can see all the food options. So that when I go to Chipotle, I want black beans, brown rice, and I can see all of the options and I can say it. Yes, near Subway is also very similar. The menu is posted, but you can see the food right there. Perfect, so everybody kind of understands. Now, why do you think people like fast casual restaurants? Why do you think people like fast casual restaurants? I mean, we know why some people like fast food. When I was broke college student, I lived off of Taco Bell. <laughs> okay, perfect. I see Laura saying that the food is better. Trina is telling me that it's inexpensive. Um, oh, Lori, I like what she says. The it feels like it's a little bit more healthy. Yeah, it feels like you're getting good food at not an overly expensive price. So tell me, how does the food come to you? Now at Olive Garden, the food comes on a plate, but at McDonald's, the food comes wrapped up. How does the food come to you in fast casual? Okay, so a lot of people are getting it. It comes on a tray, in a box. Tell me about the silverware, the silverware. Ooh, I like how Shannon used the word disposable. Disposable, you can throw it away. Yeah, perfect. So at fast casual, you might not get the real utensils. Sometimes you do, but usually you're gonna get high-end plastic. But one big problem at a lot of these fast casual restaurants, they love the color black. Has anybody ever noticed that? They love the color black for their utensils. And so they will put black forks in a black container on a dark counter. Sweet niblets, where's the contrast? So think about that, just know that. I can tell you definitely at Chipotle, there's a place called Waffle Love that I totally adore. Um, it's black on black on black on black. Oh man. So next week we're going to talk about, or next time we're going to talk about what do you do about these contrast situations. I'll give you a fast tip right away. When you order, ask them to give you the utensils. They'll give you a weird look. Huh? What do you mean? You just say, hey, 
I have a vision impairment. I can't see the contrast. Will you just hook a sister up and give me some utensils? That's a very easy way of getting what you need. But contrast can sometimes not be your friend at fast casual because black is supposed to look chic and clean. Okay, here's our review of fast casual. It's a hybrid or a mix of fast food and casual dining. Fast casual offers minimal table service. The menu is limited and moderately priced. You still have to order approaching a counter, which can be tricky because we'll talk about how do you advance in a line because how do you know when to move up? Or what do you do when you wanna eat at Chipotle but you can't see all of the ingredients? So we're gonna talk about that next time. So come on back. Um, fast casual is still pretty affordable. It usually doesn't have great contrast um, with the silverware. And then tell me about the seating of a place like Chipotle or Panera. What's the seating situation like? Can anybody tell me? The seating is minimal. Again, it's that hybrid. So they want you to sit and eat there. So you're gonna find some good seating, not as much as casual dining, but more than fast food. Remember, fast casual is always in the middle, always in the middle of casual dining and fast food. It's pretty nice. All right, we've got nine minutes left and I wanna get us through two other types of restaurants. And then I will tell you that I had an idea as I was writing my lesson plans that I would give you an example. I will give you the sheet that I'm using with all the restaurants. I'll give that so that everybody has it. Oh, Hannah, that's another good example. Panda Express. Is Panda Express fast, casual, family dining, or fast food? What do you guys think Panda Express is? Anybody? Quickly, who can tell me in the chat window? Yeah, I see a lot of fast food. Would you, yes, it sounds tricky like it might be fast, casual, but remember, fast, casual has that minimal table service. So Panda Express is fancy fast food, although I'm sure they would probably never tell you that. Um, but it really falls more into that fast food category um, because you're just getting your food and you're taking it. All right, we're gonna move on to two last areas and we're gonna talk about them a little quickly, but we don't need to go as in depth with them. So the first one is called a full service restaurant or fine dining. Full service restaurant or fine dining. Now I know some of you might be thinking that Texas Roadhouse is fine dining and baby, my heart is right there with you because I love me some Texas Roadhouse. Um, and because I have four kids, when six people need to go out and eat, that's our family fine dining experience, air quotes, is to go to Texas Roadhouse because that's a lot of money. But unfortunately, Texas Roadhouse really isn't as fine dining as I would hope it to be. So full service restaurants or fine dining have uh, a nice hostess, which I know you're thinking, they have that at Texas Roadhouse too. They do, but with fine dining, it's much more of the experience, much more of the experience. So you will still have a waiter, but you might have more silverware on the table. So you might find that you'll have a soup spoon, a salad spoon, um, Hannah says that these restaurants, they cook in front of you. Not always, you know, if, if you're going to go to like a Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, um, it's really about the experience that they want to give you. Okay. So at upscale restaurants, it's really about the experience. They want you to feel like you are spending the money and it was well spent cloth on the tables cloth napkins, you might have, you guys won't because you don't drink, but they might have a special wine menu or a wine connoisseur. Um, they might have different places who give you different meals, different settings for you. The best place that I can think about this is I ate at Fine Dining in Las Vegas at Mario Batali's B&B restaurant. And when I was there, I had somebody bringing me a plate for my appetizer and then a different server came in, cleaned up all my table before the next course came in. Lots and lots of attention. 
um, the food portions, do you think that they're going to be big or smaller? Big or smaller at a fine dining upscale? Ooh, we're kind of split. I see lots of people saying big, but I also see lots of people saying small. I'm going to tell you, you're probably not going to have leftovers at an upscale restaurant because there, they're really focusing on the food being an art form. So it's going to be very nice looking, might be things you don't normally eat. So you might see duck or something big, something more unique on the menu. You're probably not going to see a cheeseburger on the menu. Oh, I like what Becky said. It's all about the presentation. Yes, yes, exactly. The part that I want you to remember, oh, Justin mentioned calamari. I have officially hit the hunger spot. That is my favorite. All right, we've got a few minutes left and I wanna talk about one important thing I want you to remember. Fine dining and casual dining are full service restaurants. Full service restaurants, you pay after the meal. The food takes longer to prepare because they're making it for you. You can customize your order a little bit more and have some fun with it. Um, but fine dining wants you to have an experience. Fancy schmancy. You would not show up to a fine dining restaurant in flip flops and shorts. You're going to get dressed up. So maybe a special occasion dinner, um, something fun and fancy that you're going to dress nicely for. That's what we would want to say fine dining. So Hannah, I see that you mentioned Denny's. I hope you're talking about a full service restaurant because of that's what Denny's is. It's a full service restaurant. Now, the last one I'm gonna talk about in our last few minutes is limited service restaurant. And this one is an easy one to pop through quickly because limited service is exactly what it says. Has anybody ever heard of a fun breakfast place that's only open in the morning to the afternoon, but they're not open at night? or vice versa. So a limited service restaurant. Oh, Jamie, I see that you said IHOP. IHOP is actually a full service restaurant because they have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can get anything at IHOP. But limited service is that short place. It has a lunch menu, maybe a breakfast. Um, it maybe could just be a pizza place where it's just going there for just pizza. Again, limited service, quick quantity, just the one thing that you want. Some limited service restaurants have a drive through if it's a breakfast place. Um, Nur, I see you mentioned Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is not a limited service. They have a nice, they're, they're almost a full service. They're that hybrid, fast, casual. Um, Ricky Lynn, a food truck. Yeah, a food truck, limited service. They're only open at certain times. You come in, limited menu. Now, don't get me wrong, food trucks are the best, as Justin just shared. In fact, my favorite one is uh, World's Best Corn Dog Truck. It's so delicious. I swear I eat healthy. I should say this right now. I really do eat healthy. Um, but limited service just has those small pockets. Usually, you pay up front at these types of restaurants. You can get pizza by the slice, something specific for that. Whew. Okay. 12.58 in Utah, we've got two minutes left for questions, and then I'm gonna set us up with what we're going to do next time. Do we have any questions before I set us up? Um, Sayan wants to know where can you get the, the corn dog, like the world's best corn dog truck? I don't know, I think it's just a Utah thing, but I love them so much, I follow them on social media. <laughs> um, any other questions about learning about the restaurants? On Thursday, we're gonna get really deep on tips and tricks about it. Okay, I don't see any other questions coming through. So remember on Thursday, I want you to remember the types of restaurants, the lighting, the menu, because that's what we're gonna decode and give us some really great skills on Thursday. Okay, I will turn it back over to our fabulous hostesses. Oh, Lily, I see that you mentioned apps again. We will get into apps another time. Don't, don't worry. We'll do that next week. I'm going to turn it back over to our hostesses right now because it's 1259 on my clock. And you will be here in two days on Thursday. On Thursday. Thank you so much, Robin. I just love your energy. It's always so enthusiastic and I am super hungry. Is there anyone else who's super hungry and ready for lunch? 
for dinner? And if two hands yes, up is time hands to up eat now. <laughs> Before we go, Robin will be back for part two, as we mentioned, on Thursday. She will be back with us. Tomorrow, however, we do hope that you are going to join us because we have a really exciting lesson all about the eye. And Cindy Bachover, who is also a returning speaker, speaker, will be making a model of the eye. So she has asked that you gather some materials, hopefully household materials that you have. And what I'm going to do is put these household materials into the chat box and also read them to you. And this way you can gather these things and be ready for joining us tomorrow. She would like you to have a hand magnifier, a hand mirror, and here are the things that you should gather to make an eye model. A cereal bowl, colored paper, colored paper circle with a hole in the middle, about the size of the cereal bowl, a sealable Ziploc bag, a squishy ball that fits within the bowl, a washcloth, a pipe cleaner, and a larger ball. So those, those are the materials. I'll put them in the chat window for you to see. It's also on the Virtual Excel Academy website. So please do take a look at that. And we hope that you join us because it sounds like a really fun project. If you don't have them, see if you can find the closest thing to it. For example, if you don't have a squishy ball, I think you could just take a piece of paper and crumple it up and make a little round ball, for example. So you might need to get creative and we'll hopefully give you some tips along the way about how to be creative in tomorrow's session. So thank you for joining us again. Thank you, Robin and Charlotte and Leanne. Bye for now and we hope to see you tomorrow. Bye everyone. Thank you, Robin. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much. Time to go eat. <laughs> <laughs>